Hi, welcome friends. I'm Candice and this is Fitness and Harmony's Pilates for a break. It's time, it's time to sort of take just a big stop sign and go, what am I doing? So today we're gonna break out some of the weights. If you have small weights, two to three to four pound would be ideal. If you need the, you only have fives, you can okay and use the fives. If you have the ball, let's see if we'll integrate that. Welcome, take a seat. I want you to meet yourself right here on the mat. Inhale and circle up and exhale and lean up and over. So you notice I have this one arm reaching up like I'm reaching for the stars over there. Inhale up. And so the trailing arm reaches up and over and then it sort of pushes down. Do that again, inhale up. I'm gonna challenge you a little bit with multifunctional movements. Right now we're just inhaling, exhaling to reach. Inhale through the nose, stretch up. Exhale through the mouth, blow out. Two more times, inhale, exhale. Take the time, take a break. It's kind of press, press pause, press stop on all your, uh, let's call it holiday prep. I don't know, whatever it is you're preparing for. Now take the arms out and just practice rolling the arms in or forward, out or backward. Practice that roll. We're getting ready to accumulate even more stress. So in a way we're getting ready and stressing to get ready to stress. <laughs> Common denominator, let's kind of move out of stress and allow ourselves to move into a space. So create a, like a place around you here Welcome yourself onto the mat. Now spin the arms back or open. Open is the word I like because we're always twisting the arms in that little glino humeral. That means shoulder arm process. Now take the arms spun open a little bit behind the plane of the body and hold that. So we're really opening up through the chest. So what we do in everyday life is not necessarily open up. Most injuries occur because of repetitive motion or repetitive holdings. So what we normally do is we hold and we cross the arms in front. So we're gonna not do that. So we're gonna keep the arms open. Now do try spinning the arms, I'll call it forward or inward. So your palms are still facing up, but they've spun down and then back. Now bring the arms a little bit back behind you. Notice they can go a little bit further now. See if the thumbs, I don't know if they meet behind you, they may probably do not without bending your elbows. So be aware that we have multi joints that are usually trying to create some process. They're trying to get to something. And so your mind has figured out ways to compensate for limited range of motions. Then we'll just take the arms around the front and give the body a big hug. So inchworm your fingertips towards each other on the back. I can actually almost reach the inner edge of my shoulder blade. If you can do that, <laughs> you say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't reach that. Okay. That's okay. If you can, wherever your fingertips are landing, kind of like dig your finger fingertips I don't want to say your nails, but the edges of your fingers into that muscle there. There's a lot of muscle there. Don't worry. It all needs a big hug anyway. Now take your head down, turn your head over to look at one wall. So it's still turned down. Notice that. Now lift your head like you're looking at the ceiling. Twist your head to look across the top of the ceiling. Stop. Twist your head so the top of your head moves forward and then scrape your chin down. Bring your head up, recross your arms the other way. So the other arm on top, take a second for that inchworm move. If you can reach the inner edge, it's called the spine of the scapula. Very, the spine is just the edge of something or it's you know the, where something comes together. If you can reach that inner edge of your shoulder blades, hook your fingers on there, whether you can or you can't, take the fingertips and dig in, dig in. Really drill holes every muscle fiber, but especially the big trapezius needs a little bit extra massage there. Hold that, drop your chin to your chest. Now go the other way, scrape your chin along your collarbone to look at the side wall, twist or actually drop the top of your head forward more. 
Now turn your face to look up at the ceiling. Lift your head up and do. Look all the way across the ceiling. Stop at that opposite wall and then twist the head. So chin up, top of the head down, and then bring your face down towards the floor and scrape the chin along the collarbone. Lift the head back up. Let's release the arms. I want to start out in a boat pose. So let's take whatever you were sitting on off, bring the soles of the feet to the floor, lean a little bit back, Bring the arms forward, palms face up. Let's lift one arm up and overhead. Twist that arm and then bring it back and through. Now the other arm, palm face up, up overhead. Twist the arm back and around and bring it through. So one arm comes up, twists around, floats back and forward. The other arm lifts up, twists around, floats back and forward. So two more. It's okay if you're not getting all this twisting in. That's just a, a bonus. Everybody likes a bonus. Leave both arms out in front of you. Now lift both arms up, hold. Bring the hands kind of to the back of the head. I'm gonna interlace my fingers. That's just the natural way there. Lean a little bit further back and hold. and then come all the way up. Let's stretch the legs out, take a wide legged forward fold. So climb the sides of the waist up, flex the feet back and then stretch forward and down. Let's start our breathing practice. You probably already have. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the breath, blow out. Inhale. If you do no other part of our practice with me today, please do the, the 40 minutes of breathing. I promise you, you will feel so much better because we spend our time in real discomfort, stress, fear, worry. And exercise, any exercise, but especially mindful exercise with a breathing practice. So don't rush it. Don't rush it. Even if my cueing goes a little bit fast today, don't rush the breath. So guide yourself in a rhythmic pattern. Above all, Joseph Pilates would say this, he would say above all breathe, but also he would say your mental and physical health is completely dependent on your spine. I don't know if you knew that. The health of your mind and your body is dependent on your, the health of your spine. So in this pose, for example, keep the spine long. Push off the floor and roll up. Let's come back to that boat pose. So soles of the feet to the floor, lean a little bit back, palms forward, shoulders rolled onto the back. Brace the abdominals, lean a little bit further back. And let's bring the hands together. I like Anjali Mudra all the time. It's a good way for me to focus my mind's energy and direct the instruction set into the body. Twist in one direction. So kind of the elbow is leading in into the floor. So with the thumbs stay mostly at the center of the heart. So make sure you're not just moving your arms around. I see that in the gym all the time. You're twisting the spine. Take this arm that's behind you, reach it behind you and hold. Imagine somebody asked you to go get something over there, but you don't want to get up. <laughs> so you're going to stay right here and see if you can reach, reach, reach for that thing. And then bring that hand back. Turn and twist the other way. Remember, thumbs stay at the heart because the heart is where it's at. We're refilling the space that we're emptying out with love. So just remember that that's the, the goal here is to empty out a space. There's been a lot of toxins that we've been accumulating. Take this arm, reach back, actually let your eyes and your head turn to follow that hand, reach a little bit further back and hold. And then bring that hand back, come all the way up. Let's spin the hands around the body, press the fingers into the floor. And as the hands are pushing down, Imagine a string pulling your sternum forward. So hands push down, chest rises forward. Really good stretch on the rotator cuff muscles on the shoulders.
the biceps. I did a little bicep work. I feel my bicep stretching here. Anything that we can do to counter the everyday stress and strain of the collapsed chest syndrome. We all sort of have that. We're all with our hands on electronics 24 hours a day. I don't know how we do it in our sleep, but some of us even do it in our sleep. Inhale, blow out through the mouth. Keep engaging your mind in the rhythm of the breath. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. I just love, love, love that we incorporate so many yogic elements. Hold on to the ankles or the feet, kind of crack this book of the feet open, but use the power of pulling. So do a row to pull the top rim of your pelvis forward. It's important that we always honor that the spine, what did Joseph Pilates say? I know you remember, it was just like two minutes ago, certainly. Now I have the shortest memory of anyone in the world, but yet I remember what Joseph Pilates said is that your mental, physical, even your spiritual health really depends on the health of your spine for you to be present. Three long breaths. Remember, we're doing this row. We're doing this row, row, row. Pull your chest forward, but not collapsing the spine down. So the spine becomes this super highway of reconnecting you to you. So if you try to be disconnected, you know that that never feels good. One more time into that boat pattern. So bring the soles of the feet. This time, arms forward, palms up, shoulders on the back, levitate the legs. I didn't think I did that last time. From here, try tipping your boat over. So the whole boat, you know, the chest, the ribs, the, the shoulders, the hips, this rectangle turned onto one side. So you're on one quarter panel here. Three, I know this is hard. Two, now see if you can tip your boat. So maybe take your, your big ship steering wheel. <laughs> and twist it over onto your other side. Remember your chest and your head and your neck and your shoulders, this whole rectangle comes with you. This is not a twist. Three, two, and one. So let's make our way onto the back and grab your smallish weights. By smallish, again, I'm saying they're three to four, maybe five pounds if that's what you have weights and come down to your back. Let's stretch the arms so that the palms are facing in. Now swim one shoulder blade to the back and then the other. So make sure that the edges of your shoulder blades are connecting onto the floor. Bring one arm up overhead, squeeze the abdominals down and then bring that arm back. So alternate one arm overhead and bring it back. But the goal here is to squeeze the abdominals. I'm gonna say rhythmically, do you remember what I said before? When you breathe, the goal of your practice should be to make space in the body for love. I know, I know. Some people laugh at me for saying that. I hope, <laughs> I hope you're not one of those. But your goal should be to elongate the spine, to learn how to control the abdominals. So the arms look like they're getting a workout here, but these are pretty light weights that shouldn't be too challenging. But really what we're doing is we're stabilizing and supporting a healthy spine. So I said, today's a good day. I'm gonna call it, take a break. Leave both arms up where they are, you know, over the chest, lift the hips up. So come to a, a bridge pose and make sure your leg bones, your hip bones, your knee bones, they're all in alignment. So the, the legs are not twisted out or in. Keep everything in line. Now from your knees to your collarbone, make sure that's also a straight line. Now from here, bend one elbow and then bend the other. All right, I want you to notice that you can articulate. People say that means I can speak well. That is one definition of articulate. <laughs> but we, it also applies to how you move and coordinate the movements of your joints. But I guess we don't talk about that as often as we do talk about talking.
keep elongating the line. Remember that big information super highway from the, the chest down through the hips and down through the knees. Three, two, leave those arms where they are up over the chest. And then we'll bring the hips down. We'll stretch both legs straight up. See if you have that that bandwidth, my friend said. I guess that's what people say now. Twist the leg bones out. Push the back of the heels in and together. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let's bring the weights together. So push the hands or the weights together into each other. As the legs drop down with the feet flexed, the arms go up overhead. When you get there, point the toes, brace the abdominals, and then squeeze everything back up. Flex the feet. Squeeze everything together, drop the legs as the arms go overhead. Point the toes, brace the abdominals, probably exhale to come back up. Inhale down, exhale up. Pilates is really called contrology because we're controlling. So I want you to think about that for a moment, how much you're controlling the middle. The legs and the feet and the hands and the arms, they're all doing something right now. Of course, they're always doing something, but you're not giving your focus to that. You're giving your focus to the abdominals and how they're controlling and supporting a safe spine. Three more times. Remember, link into your own personal rhythmic breath, not mine. And then when you're done, we'll bring the feet down. We'll put the the palms down. We'll put the weights down, put the palms down and then hug the knees to the chest. Close your eyes now and take a moment. This is where I want you to recognize that you need a break. You've been working really hard. Drop your chin down so the back of your neck stays long and open. Our goal today is to make space by taking a break. So a space could be like physical length with height <laughs> volume that kind of space but a space could also be space and time like i stopped i pressed pause how often think about this for a second how often do you do nothing and by nothing i don't mean sleep that's something i don't mean you know staring at the tv that's something I don't mean, you know, reading your favorite novel. That's something. And that's all very good things. Maybe all very necessary things. How often do you do nothing? I don't mean Shavasana, by the way. I know you just thought of that. Like, oh, we know Shavasana counts. No, it doesn't. Shavasana is fantastic. But it doesn't count as nothing. Don't hurt my feelings that way. Let's do that one leg stretch. Reach one leg out, reach the opposite leg up. You can hold on, but you don't have to. You can drop the chin into the chest and round the shoulders, but you don't have to. Point both sets of toes. Inhale, exhale, switch. Inhale, switch. Blow out to the mouth, switch. Inhale your nose, switch. Exhale your mouth, switch. Inhale, blow out. Inhale. Blow out, inhale, blow out, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Keep going. I know you're doing great. So we're controlling the holding. So we're not just holding because we're holding, because we forgot to do something else. We're holding because we're controlling that mentally, focusing and purposefully. Three. Two, and one, come all the way down. <laughs> now stretch the arms out wide so that your upper body is making like a, a strong, a holding, right? Bring the knees into this, you know, 90 degree flexion. Yeah, that's one way to say it, Candace. And then twist over to one side of the hip. Do you remember we were in boat before? Oh, look, I'm getting a visitor. This is a, this is a big... Hello there. 
I must have said something that, that sparked this visit. All right, let's draw one knee in, stretch the other leg out. We're on our side, remember, and then switch. So one knee in, the other leg out, one knee in, the other leg out. Inhale, exhale. Now I just combined two exercises. One was, remember we're on our side there in side boat. The other one was that one leg stretch. I changed it a little bit but I'm just combining two exercises. So if you're there and those legs won't stay up or you can't stay twisted or you can't move the legs in and out like this, good for you. Good for you. Work on the breath. Three, blow out through the mouth, stabilize the spine. Two, blow out through the mouth, stabilize and suck the belly in. All right, let's go over to the other side. So twist the hips over to that other side. Pause there, hold. Remember, your arms are the anchor. They're holding you down. Here we go. One knee in, the other leg stretches out. Exhale, switch. Inhale, switch. Exhale, switch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So your hips are this little, you know, slight diagonal, a little bit of a twist there. This is not actually in real life unusual at all. We do these things a lot of the time. We're not 90 degrees in real life. So exercise doesn't generally mimic real life function. Three. Remember the lower belly goes in on the exhale. Pull the belly in. One more time. Pull the belly in and then make your way up. And around into child's pose. So we did a great session just right now on that lower belly. So we're in child's pose now. <laughs> there you go. I do start every day with a downward dog. I do, I get out of bed and I do a downward dog. And guess who's right there doing downward dog right with me. So he's used to this. He's like, okay, it's time, it's time for me. His name is Phineas in case you haven't followed along. And there is a Phineas pose. <laughs> it looks a lot like, a, oh, I don't know, dead bug. <laughs> Let's come up into hands and knees. Brace the abdominals. Lift one of those little weights. Stretch it forward. Now, this is a little weight. Pull it back and then kick the arm back. So it's like a, it's like a row tricep kickback. Keep the elbow high. If you do nothing else here, keep the elbow high. I see a lot of dragging elbows here. <laughs> what, what am I doing here? Keep the elbow high. So look in your mirror, look in your camera, look in whatever. Ask your friend, is my elbow high? <laughs> of course, in order to do that though, abs are pulling in. Exhale. Three more, pull the abs in, pull your abs in like you're, it's your job. Love your abs or leave them alone. Yeah. Make sure that you make a rule. All right, we're gonna go over to the other arm. Then I'm gonna take care of my abs. Reach forward, pull back, extend back. Do square the shoulders, so try not to twist open here. Now, if you do, as a, an instructor, I say a lot of things. I give you a lot of commands. <laughs> and if you violate them, that's fine. As long as you're doing it on purpose. So let's say you do want to twist open here. Like this just seems right to me. Go ahead, do it, but acknowledge that I'm controlling this. So it doesn't really matter most of the time, there's a few times I get really, really squirrely that you better <laughs> be careful. Three, two, what is the belly doing? And one, let's go over to that other arm. Now, walk your knees a little bit further back. Lift the other arm up. We have an elbow in. We're gonna fly this arm out and down. All right, I just added a lot. 
<laughs> so if you're going, what is happening here? This didn't look so hard. Now, all of a sudden, it's like the hardest thing I've ever done because a lot is going on here. We're really using the oblique muscles. We're using the transverse of the, we're using the pectoral muscles. We're using some balancing muscles. And now we're adding in this rear deltoid and trapezius muscle. A lot of things are going on here. So now let me just give you one more thing. Breathe. Exhale, belly goes in. So it almost doesn't matter what exercise you're doing. What does matter is your attention to how the abs are contributing to the stability, strength, and support of the spine. Exhale, three. Exhale, two. Exhale, one. Let's go to the other side. Now, when I told you pick up a light weight, you're beginning to go, you I should listen to that. Elbow in tight, brace the core, fly the arm out and down. So remember, you're leaning just a little bit forward. You're not quite in a full plank, but you're not back in hands and knees. You're somewhere in between. Right there in the middle, I really like working out in the middle where we're not quite there and we're not, we didn't do nothing. We're somewhere where we're not paying attention, kind of the journey in between. Exhale, brace the lower abs. Exhale, brace the lower abs. Here we go, three more. Exhale, two and three. Let's come all the way down to the belly. Give this a break, let's stop. Press pause. Bring maybe your forehead to your hands so that your head is supported. Bend your knees, widen the knees a little, and just swing your feet gently side to side. So close your eyes with your head down. Do slower, more relaxing, gentle breaths. I asked you a moment ago, how long, or do you ever? Just do nothing. Is that ever something you can do? Do three slow, easy breaths. Soak in the adaptation response the body's going through. And then bring the feet down. Turn the toes under, bring the knees a little bit closer, some more like parallel legs, and push the feet into the floor. Push really hard. I want your feet to think they're in plank pose. Does that make sense? You know how your feet are, are holding you or your legs are working really hard in plank pose? I want your legs to be in plank pose. Make them really hard and strong and stiff. Now, counteract that by squeezing your abdominals in. Now, if you just did your legs and not your abs, your back would kind of twit, turn, break, flex, whatever that word is. So counteract that by squeezing your abdominals. Three. Two, squeeze your abdominals like you mean it or leave them alone. <laughs> And now leave the abdominals holding. Take your arms out just a little bit wider, chest height next to the mat. Spin the elbows a little bit back. Push down as if you're going to go up into plank pose, but don't. Just push down as if you're preparing. So feet drilling into the mat, abdominals scooping up off the mat, arms pushing down, pectorals contracting. Make sure your shoulders are in a healthy position. That's always super important. Three, two, keep the abdominal squeezing in the support of a long, safe spine. Now, move your hands right next to your lower side ribs. So where, where are your ribs? <laughs> Find those ribs. I know you know where they are. Squeeze the elbows together behind you, if you can, same thing. Push the feet down, push the hands down, lighten the body's weight off the floor. I'm not saying come off the floor. I'm saying just lift some of your weight. <laughs> I don't know, half. 
So push with your hands and push with your feet as if you're lifting that amount of weight. Does that make sense? Three, raise the abdominals now. Two, oh, this is a good one. And one, make your way back into child's pose. All right. Walk both hands over to one side of the mat. Make this trailing hand kind of cross over. So it's reaching even further at a diagonal. Three. Two. Now go the other way. So walk the hands over, but then take this trailing hand and even cross it further over. So we've been working that tricep. So I want to give the tricep and the back of the shoulder a little bit of a stretch. Three. Two. Make your way up and into downward dog. I want to make sure I don't say that too loud because, you know, downward dog. <laughs> that means something in this house. Sound the breath. Remember, this whole time you've been using your breath in a rhythmic fashion. It's almost like, you know, when you hear a song and especially if it's a good song, you can't help but sort of sing along or tap your foot. That's what we're doing with the breath. It's a good song that helps gather your mental, <laughs> your mental uh, little threads there and weave them into something beautiful. Push forward into plank pose. So, okay, so here's that time to practice shoulder blade stability, shoulder blade stability. Again, if you're out there going, I don't plank, <laughs> that's not something I can do, good for you. Come into hands and knees, maybe your wrists don't do that, come down onto the forearms, good for you, I'm proud of you. After three, practice shoulder blade stability. So it's almost like you're weaving your underarm onto your ribs. Push back to downward dog. Walk forward to forward fold. Let's cradle the elbows and then rock the baby left, right. Let the head hang. Three. Make that sound in the back of the throat. Hold center, now twist, like one elbow comes up away from the body and then back down and then twist. So twist left and right, revolving the spine. And so in a really subtle way, we're stretching all of the fascia around the side and back. Now, when I upload my video you know, to the, the platforms, they choose a a thumbnail. That's the picture you see before you click on it. And don't you know, they're going to pick one where I'm like, got my hand on my <laughs> rump here and looking very funny. They always know they pick really good ones. I don't know how they do it. Three, two. It's not about looking good, right? It's about feeling good and the health of that spine. All right. Make your way all the way up by pushing into the legs. Let's come to a wide plie. Let's take the legs out wide. Spin the leg bones out, lift the chest up, but sink the tailbone down. Spread the collarbones and the chest out. Let's just let the arms sort of rest there. And then just do some plies, down and up. So down, begin to engage inner outer thighs. Everything we've done so far has a lot to do with the shoulders, the neck, and the abs, of course. So I want you to think more and more about how the inner outer thighs are guiding this movement down and up, down and up. So inner outer thighs, glutes, hamstrings, the inner thigh guides the knee. This is an important point for a lot of us. A lot of us, the inner thigh is much weaker than the outer thigh. The outer thigh is really sort of a ligament. <laughs> it's, it's kind of not fair. The inner thigh are strings of muscles, but the outer thigh is a ligament, which is 
almost as strong as a bone, you know, it's a really thick, so it's not really fair. <laughs> it was, you, you know, you had no, you were, you were doomed, I guess, but we can work that inner thigh. So I think that's what we'll do after this. Three, two, hold down, hold down, lift the chest, brace the abs, drop the tail, little pulses down, 10, nine, chest open, abs in, five, four, three, two, and one. We'll come all the way up, walk these feet closer together. PA a little bit down and hold, same thing. We just have the feet a little bit closer. Balance on one leg, cross the other leg sort of in front, and then lift and tap. Now keep a bend in that supporting leg. Keep the chest broad, keep the abdominals braced in, Four, three, two, hold up and little pulses up, just for 10. Raise the abs for five, four, three, two, and one. Try the other side. So we start out in sort of a plie. Shift onto one leg, cross the other leg over. Legs really turned out open, lift and tap. Keep the chest open. Notice how we start to do things. We start to sort of crump, crumple over it. Don't do that. Keep your, your face to the sun. Sun's always there. Just sometimes there's a cloud. That's all it is. Four, three, two. Okay, hold. Little lifts now. 10, nine. Raise the abs. Five, four, Three, two, and one. All right, come to the front of the mat. Inhale and circle up. Exhale, extend up and back. Hold that. Three breaths here. Keep opening up the front of the body. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, dive to forward fold. Three, almost like there's all these little channels in your body. You feel that now, you know, the legs are awake, the abs are awake. When you're ready, bend your knees and come down to a seated pose. Roll, pull the, ch the chin into the chest, pull the knees into the chin, into a ball. Holds, we're balancing in this little ball thing. And then come all the way down to the back. Good. So now when you're ready, cross the ankle over the other knee. And then what I want you to do is flap this knee out and in. This is it, guys. This is all we got to do. We've worked the chest, the back, the abs, the shoulders, the triceps, if you'll remember. We've worked the front of the abs and all the oblique sides. Now, push this knee out and hold. Lift the other leg up. So, so you're forcing this leg to turn open. We worked that inner thigh. We were just standing and lifting that inner thigh. So maybe you feel this. We work some of the outer thigh and definitely the glute with the bridge. Slow down the breath. One more breath here. Good. Release that out. Switch the other angle. And then here's where we do that butterfly wing. So twist the knee, open and closed. I often say that if you do nothing else, like do this, <laughs> do just one, just one of these a day. Any movement is good. All movement is lubrication to help a joint. As we age, other things we can't really change, but we can lubricate the joint. Now push the knee open. 
maybe lift the other leg in so that it really twists this inner thigh to the outside. Maybe pulling more, I don't know you. <laughs> As we age, our joints feeling bad, our joints getting uh, crepitus, it's like a dryness, is something that bothers us more than our muscles getting a little bit weak or even a little muscular pain. So taking care of the joints becomes more important. Two slow breaths. Good. And then begin to make your way into Shavasana as you bring your body all the way down and encourage a gentle arch in your low back. Let the arms spin open and the eyelids drop closed. Before you come back to reality, before you enter the outer world again, Take one more look at the light that resides within. Just like the sun, it is always there. All we've done here today is take a peek through the veil. Gaze at that sun, that light Soak in its love. Take a deep breath like you're taking a drink from that light. Fill the belly and then let it go. Begin to roll to your side. Open your eyes. Push all the way up. Come back up into an easy pose, maybe cross legs if they will. Settle the hips down, inhale and stretch the arms up. Bring the palms together, reach up. Inhale as you reach and separate the hands. Exhale, we're all done. Thank you so much for joining me today.